praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachak with us. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone that rule well through the scriptures. Please don't be elect. I'm the brother Kayav, GMS Indiana, in the branch of Indianapolis. And I got uh, the big bro, Mathathia, the head of Des Moines, Iowa. And I got the brother uh, uh, Isaiah out here in Nebraska, Omaha. And I got your call. Oh yeah, you called the brother of uh, 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 Des Moines, Iowa as well. And uh, the title of this lesson will be called Shame. That's the theme of it. Now the scripture speaks about, uh, you know, there is a shame. If you mind grabbing that mm -hmm. bottle shot. All right, so we can start with that. And any precepts you brothers got, you know, we just, you know. I had a lesson written down, but through the spirit it's just gonna, you know, it's just gonna flow. This is uh, Sirach 4 and 21. For there is a shame that bringeth sin, and there is a shame which is glory and grace. Right, there is a shame that bringeth sin, man. Because the scripture speaks about in 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter, let not your sins weigh you down. So, right, you be shamed to the point where you just give up hope on yourself. You stop believing in yourself and you just allow yourself to fall into ruin, right? But then there is a shame that brings, uh, that brings you to... Uh, uh, intestinal fortitude something that makes you dig deep within yourself and says I'm gonna change and I'm gonna be better and I'm gonna do better because I don't like the feeling of shame I don't like this feeling now I got this definition of uh, shame all right it says a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior so that means that the actions that you committed you so disgusted with it within yourself that you don't want to exist <clears throat> within that state of of, uh, of of consciousness all right the battle that you the battle that you have within your mind is is it's uh it, it, it conflict it, it, it's conflicting that's why you have people when they commit certain shameful acts they end up what committing suicide all right or they end up uh, harming themselves. You know, you got the emos. They cut themselves. The, the, uh, hey, you got the one guy from um, that movie. Uh, remember Da Vinci Code? They had the the main antagonist. He would he when he would commit sin, he would beat himself. You know what I mean? But that scripture says there is a shame that uh, what is what is it said a uh, shame that bringeth sin and a shame that bringeth glory and grace. If I can add to you real Go quick, because you, you, yeah. you spoke about, you know, the shame that bringeth sin. Now, there is, you know, like you said in the uh, second Ezra, it speaks about, you know, let not your sins weigh you down. There is, you know, individuals where they uh, they commit an act and they allow that act to, you know, to overtake them. To overtake them. And this is uh, just real quick. Sirach 14 and 2. It says, blessed is he whose conscience have not condemned him. What was that again? Sirach 14 and 2. Kind. Sirach 14 and 2, blessed is he whose conscience have not condemned him and who has not fallen from his hope in the Lord, man. Yeah. So a just man falling seven times, we have to understand that, man. You know, but yeah. it speaks about in 1 Corinthians, not 1 Corinthians, I don't know why I said that. Uh, in the book of Psalms 130, it says that uh, if the Lord will mark iniquities, who shall stand? But it's forgiveness with him, man, that he may have to be feared. Roughly paraphrasing verse 3 and verse 4, man. Yes, sir. You know? So we're, so we're going to fall, man. We're going to fuck up, right? But it's meant for us to get up again and continue to persevere through the spirit and power of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. That's going into second edges like the brother quoted yeah. and not allowing our sins to weigh us down because we still in this body of sin. Yes, so sir. don't get it twisted like we not finna still fuck up, man. You know, but see, when it comes to these people, the majority of, the pe uh, of our people, right, within the society, it says what? There is a sin that there's sin that bringeth sin. What did I say? There's a shame that bringeth sin. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, my words is so all coming. Second, you know. four. I mean, no, Sirach four. Yeah, that's Sirach four. It says it is. It is a shame that bringeth sin. Now here in the book of Mark eight and thirty eight, it says, "Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father." with the holy angels man yes sir so there's a, a shame that bring of sin and that's what man these people are ashamed of the gospel 
These people are ashamed of the testimony of Yahweh Shah. And that's ultimately what happens, man, when guys, you know, going back to that Sirach 14 and 2, going back to that second Ezra the brother quoted, you know, ultimately that's a cop out, man. Ultimately that, you know, that's the that's a that's a, a way out for guys, man. It goes to the Sirach, a wicked man finds an excuse according, according to his According to will. his will, exactly. You know? But if true shame, like Paul wrote about in Second Corinthians, is I got that. You can Baba uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right, this is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 8. It says, For though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent. And um, just a key point, when you read about Paul's letter, it says that his letters were weighty. All right, you look up that word weighty, it says severe and stern. So, I mean, pretty much when Paul was saying different things, man, it would cut you. All right, because he was speaking in the spirit. It says that the word of the Most High is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So these things are supposed to cut us. All right, but as it's going to go into, it should cut us to what? To repent. That shame to bring forth a change. Exactly. That shame that leadeth to glory and grace. That's right. Are you ashamed to the point where you reflect within yourself and be like, no, nah, I need to stop that shit. Right. No, nah, I need to change that. Yeah. Or are you ashamed like, no, nah, what I'm doing is right. And now you're ashamed of the gospel. Now you're ashamed of the words of the Lord. You know? Uh, there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is death. Yep. It says, for though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I perceived that the, sa the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but ye sorrowed to repentance, for ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance, and that's that shame that brothers are speaking about, man. All right, that godly sorrow. That's what that, that worketh to what? To Repentance. glory, man. Oh, yeah, that glory. No, just, just quoting back to that Sirach 4. Yeah, yeah. It says there is a shame that's to sin and there is a shame that's to glory. Yes, sir. You know, and that glory is, is through repentance, like, you know, like the brother said. Yeah, it's that's it. why you, so like, that's why when you come into the truth, it is a, a process of you getting refined. Now, when you get refined, look, the, the, the fire don't, getting put in the fire, that's not getting a fucking hug. All right, the, the the scripture speaks about the fire proof if the potter's vessel, okay? So you gotta see if this if this vessel can withstand uh, uh, adversity, and that adversity can be you getting cussed out based off your imperfections or based off your your pride or based off whatever it is that's needed for your particular spirit to to refine you into into a, into a better individual. For the master's use, there's a scripture that speaks about that. When you go into that word, it speaks about uh, being a tool for the master's use. Well, that's uh, Timothy, uh, Second Timothy two. Somebody mind grabbing that? I got, I grab it for you. So Second I just bro. quote a precept in the meantime that links up with that in the book of Proverbs. It says, "Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer." The yes, sir. Malachi, is, it tells you that the finer is uh, pretty much a high shot, man. Yes, sir. So yeah. the dross is taken away. When that dross is taken away from us through the fire and through the afflictions, we become something that's useful for Yahweh Shai to work through and use. Yeah. Going back to that wisdom of Solomon, it says that wisdom will not dwell in a malicious soul or a person that's subject to sin. So the Holy Spirit, all right, won't dwell. It will flee. Right, right, it'll flee, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that, you know, that we are being refined so that we can continue to be used as we see examples yeah. of guys. They were being used at one point, but because the dross wasn't being purged out of them, therefore the Lord discarded them and took away his Holy Spirit. Well, well no, if I, if I can add, because the brother spoke about, you know, the fire ain't a fucking hug, man. You know, it tells us in Hebrews 12, that the the chastisement of this present time is not joyous but grievous, mm -hmm. but it yieldeth the peaceable fruits of righteousness. Right now, mm -hmm. what did Yahweh Shah tell us about the parable of the sower? It spoke about um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's stony ground. I don't think I don't think it's the thorns. Yeah. The thorns stony, was uh stony. being being, being you know the cares of this world choking them out. Yeah. Stony ground was what man uh, when they sprung up immediately. And then the sun burned them. Mm -hmm. And then what Yahweh shot tell us what that meant. It meant it meant about what? The afflictions and the trials that they had to go through. And by and by, they was offended. Mm -hmm. So that's ultimately them coming. It's going back to what we mentioned earlier about them being offended at the word. Yep. Them being ashamed of the word because of what? 
the trials and tribulations and what they had to suffer for the word's yeah. sake, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you want to say something they, out? No, nah, I was going to say they didn't feel, you know, they didn't, they, they didn't feel like it was worth it. So they would just rather go and take the easy way out, you know, versus us as in the shame that y'all speaking of. We like we mentioned on the highways, we wake up every day. And even though our thoughts get to us at times, it's something in us that's like, I got to do something. Mm -hmm. I, gotta I gotta do, do something, something towards you. How about Shimia was shot? You know what I'm saying? And that's the shame, man. That keeps us going, you know. But once you get shameless, you get wild, you know. Right, exactly. You yep. just don't care. You do. Our, our people are shameless because yeah. they basically naked in front of the Most High, right along partying with Esau, man. Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? Neither were they. They were not that. at all ashamed. Oh. Neither could they blush. <laughs> Neither could they Jeremiah blush. Jeremiah six and fifteen. <clears throat> that's one of the precepts on the lesson. Salakia. But, uh, no, you got it. Uh, uh, I think this brother still got the Corinthians in there. Salaki, what was it? I grabbed it real quick. That was quick. Jeremiah 6. 6 and, and 15, uh, but he can finish the Corinthians. So we can grab this, that. Yep, this is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse um, 10. It says, uh, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. Right. But, so don't you ain't got to double back, man. So right when you when uh, godly sorrow working repentance to salvation. So once you get into that mode, once that's where you the direction you headed, then you ain't got to think twice again, man. Not to be repented of, because repent re means again, pent mean made sorry. So you ain't got to be made made sorry for the, your decision to uh, serve your about Shimmy I was shy. All right, hey, what did Yahweh shy say? No man who put his hand to the plow looking back is worthy of the kingdom roughly paraphrasing all right and that's what ultimately that's what a lot of guys deal with man when they don't really process the scriptures like the elders in dallas say man understand what you are part of man hey when 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 the two sir when the two disciples actually how was shot uh I, I think it was their mother uh it was yeah it was james and john james and john mm -hmm. Con, can i sit at your right and can i sit at your left how was i said that's not mine to give showing you there's a separation of power between the most high and his son right but he asked like, can you drink with my cup they said yeah he said you will drink of it mm. and what was the cup of you shot real quick second timothy 3 and 12 yeah yay and all that will live godly in hamashiach yahushai shall suffer persecution a brother got a page i don't know if it's a uh, it's a moniker. It might be uh, the young elder Gabaria. It says, uh, which I'm not, it, um, another brother. It says, they will persecute you. So you will be persecuted for this gospel, man. How do Esau work? How do Esau operate? Esau defame you. And if the, and if the defamation don't work, then they torture and kill you. That's part of the doctrine. If you, if you, when you study and listen and deal with the elites and how they get down, the, the breakdown of the elites that rule this world, man, defamation, and if that don't work, your ass gonna die. They gonna do. They gonna kill you. It says, uh, verse ten. Call, call out where you at again. Back in Second Corinthians seven and ten, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold, this selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you. Mm -hmm. Yea, what clearing of yourselves. You see, so you, you see what that shame brought. That godly sorrow, right? That shame that we were, uh, spoke about in Sirach 4, that worketh to glory. Look how, look how much carefulness it wrought within us, man. See, that shame worked in us to the point where it's like, nah, let me make sure I don't make that same mistake again. Let me make sure I don't repeat that same, you, 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 you know, so you don't feel that shame again, man. Right? But you got it, brother. It says, what clearing of yourselves? Yea, what indignation? Yea, what fear? Yeah, indignation, righteous anger. That's right. You get mad. And you know what you know? You, you and you know, mad you, at yourself. You kind. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, I, I know every one of us can speak on that, man. Yeah. yeah. Of how angry you get with yourself. Like, man, how the fuck I, I how I allow myself, you know? You are completely fighting against yourself. That's it. You know? Time. And sometimes when you don't win no battles, you know, you're like, man, fuck, man. Gotta go back to the drawing board, you know? Time. Gotta go back to the drawing board. You're not just, all right, well, like you mentioned about the people being uh, sown on the stony ground. Persecution, tribulation. That's the. It says when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. So you're gonna go through things. It ain't gonna be no cakewalk. 
this ain't gonna be easy because it's so much worth fighting for. Yeah. So why is it gonna be easy? It's not gonna be easy. It ain't supposed to be easy. Yahweh Shai didn't take it easy. Man, um, the uh, the elder Yashawamba, when he, he brought out the fact how when they offer him something to drink, he didn't accept the first one. Yeah, the myrrh. Because it it, it helps uh, with alleviate the, with the, the pain. pain. Con. Yeah, it was so wine, wine chose, mingled with myrrh. He chose to take the the, the hardest route, man. Yeah. All right? Yeah. And, 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 and are, is the servant greater than his master? So we got that same walk. We we, we got. Yeah. Hey, we, we see see the see the more we try to take the route that alleviates the pain. The more we make it worse for us you in our situation, it. bro. You prolong it. Like straight up, the more we realize we making it worse, we realize why the fuck they like. Damn, why am I going through more hell? Why am I suffering more? Because you looking for the comfort. You looking for comfort in a place where we ain't supposed to receive that comfort, bro. Exactly. Yep. You looking for a uh, you know a way out of the pain when the Lord don't want us to get out of that pain, bro. Mm -hmm. Certain times we gotta sit in it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the Lord wants, because it says what? Through the sorrow of the heart. The countenance the is made better. The through the sight and the water. The heart is made better. The water. Uh, through the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better, man. That's Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I have a quick one. If you yeah. Uh, Psalms 119 to 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. And I remember, um, and Apostle Ram, i here with us, right? He spoke about, uh, he said, man, Apostle Tahar told us, man, we got to learn to love to suffer. Mm. He said how, how, how him and Apostle Gabal looked at Apostle Tahar like he had three heads. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but, bro, that's what this thing of ours is about, man. Yeah. It's about, it's about. Go ahead, no, go, no, go, no, go, no, 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 you got it. You got well, it. I was going to say it go back to the Acts 5. The disciples, and, and you got to read, man. Romans, the 15th chapter, speaks about the things written before time was written for our learning that we, through pages of the scriptures, might have hope. That's it. So you read the examples. You read in Maccabees when they tried to get Eleazar, yep. okay? And uh, 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 to basically... Uh, I'm, I, the word escaped to me. To eat that swine. To eat, to, you know, to eat the swine, to basically betray his people. To bow to the image, pretty much, because that's what they're yeah, going to try to do yeah. in today's society, yeah. man. Yeah, I just said that to your car the other day. But the, the, it's to bow to the image. But what did he do? He said, look, he, he, he flung himself to the torment, man. Yep. He flung himself to it. Like, man, let's get this shit over with, bro. Yep. I'm not doing it. So you got to, like, you got to read... To, 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 to be emboldened and see, to understand what the Lord required of you regarding this. Because uh, uh, when you read Wisdom of Solomon, uh, the, the scripture says, The Lord loveth none except you dwell with wisdom. So the Lord don't fucking love you, G. My guy, whatever. The Lord don't love you unless you dwell with wisdom. And, yeah. and Yahweh Shai is that wisdom. And he told us. Walk with wisdom. To them that are without, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And the key word is what? Walk in wisdom. So it go it goes deeper than you just speaking these things. Yeah. It shows that we have to reflect well, what we teach, what we speak, what we learning, what we reading. We have to show forth in our everyday life, man. Yeah. It have to reflect in our decision making and how we have our being. Yeah. You know? That's why Saul was feared David. The scripture speaks yeah, yeah, about yep. David. Move uh, wisely, wisely in all his in ways. All his ways. But you're not going to know that if you're not reading. Yep. How, how you going to know that if you're not reading? And King David suffered, bro. He's, when you read about what, what what our king went through, man. He suffered. <laughs> you he, know? But, but look, when you think when you read David, you're like, oh, yeah, he kicking ass and getting boxed. King David suffered his, his in, from the time he got introduced to Saul. Matter of fact. From the time that uh, he was before a then. king. Well, before then, bro, he wrestled. He when he was a keeper Ooh. of the sheep, what happened? Yeah. He yeah. said, he said, he said, I, I, I fought a bear and a lion, bro. Yeah. So before he was introduced to Saul, bro, he was going through those trials. And, and you know? Yeah. Just imagine that, bro. You got to wrestle a whole fucking bear and a lion, bro. And this is and this thousands of years ago. Them bears and lions <laughs> was big as hell. Oh, yeah. They weren't <laughs> eating uh, GMO antelopes and all that extra shit. These was big ass bears and lions, and he wasn't a grown man when he was doing that. But see, that's why in Ezekiel, 
Ezekiel tells us what was written therein is what lamentations, Station, mourning, and woe. woe, and that's what we read about what our forefathers were going through, man. You know, so 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 like the brother was about to quote in Acts, yeah. it says what that the apostles, man, they rejoiced mm -hmm. that they suffered for his name. that they were able to suffer for his namesake, man. So yeah. it's the same thing, whatever we going through, man. But that's a perspective that we have to have, and it's through the precepts, like the brother said. We gotta read. Gotta we gotta read in order to have this perspective on life, because we're here to suffer, bro. America, uh, the word America goes back to the Hebrew word mara, which means bitter. Yeah, yeah. We're here to suffer. We were brought here as a punishment, man. We on punishment. You see? Yeah. So we ain't here to prosper. You know, the Lord might give us a season where Satan, he's removed Satan from us and, you, you know, but that's why Peter tells us what he said. He said, um, how, how did he word it, man? About the fiery trial. Oh, uh, that working for, for, for a moment, working go. Think it the water, brother. Think it not strange, the fiery trial, which is to try you, man. Why did Peter say it like that? Why did he tell us like that? Because at times brothers can be like, bro. Why the fuck am I going through this? <laughs> Hold on, Lord, 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 Lord why? Mm -hmm. That's why he said, think it not strange, bro. It ain't no weird shit. It ain't just no, you know, yeah. this is a part of it, man. Paul wrote this and said what? That we know, uh, how did he say it, man? That we be not moved by these afflictions. Because mm -hmm. we know, we know we were appointed unto appointed these to things, man. These you see what I'm saying? So we have no choice but to embrace it into what? To glorify the names of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot that we worthy to go through these things for his name's sake. But I'm going to let you brothers get back to your precepts. Baba Kasha, I'm going to read what you quoted. 1 Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, I'm going to read the next verse too. Beloved, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. And we go into that word try, it means test or proven. Yep. Now the scripture speaks about uh, 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 prove a friend, try a friend. All right, and when you have tried a friend and proven a friend concerning Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, it make it through what? Uh, uh, friends and prophets. All right, so you got to be you got to be tested. Yeah. Okay. It says wisdom shall uh, bring him by crooked ways. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and test his soul if he can be uh, and torment you know. him. Yeah, it says I think it says torment him soul right. Yeah. Until, yeah. Torment him until she may trust her soul. Then shall she, re, uh, re, uh, you know, reveal the straight yeah. path. Oh, and, and, and there's a precept in Job. Job it says, "What is man that thou art mindful of him, that thou shouldest try him at every moment?" How heavy is that that he made that statement, bro? Because it allows us to see that the Lord is mine is toward us. Going back into the look, let's 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 look at Job's life or or let's look at what's written about Job in its entirety, right? The first, second chapter, what happens? <laughs> Satan comes, comes and presents himself before the Lord and says, Look, the Lord boasts on Job. Man. You see my servant? You see how he is skewed evil? You see how he, my nigga, putting it in in, in our terms today. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did Satan say? Shit, it's because you you, you got him. You cover him. You look out for him. That's why. You got the hedge over him. Take his money. Take his children. Take his wealth. Take his health. Mm. Take these things and he going to curse you. The Lord said, you know what? Go ahead and touch that man. Let's see. Mm. So it's the same thing that's happening with us, man. So we being tried at every moment. The Lord has allowed Satan to try us at every turn, at every moment, at every, every part of our life to see bro or look are, are you with it are we still gonna give glory and honor and praise to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah no matter of what state we in and that goes into a financial state a physical state no matter if we broke no matter if we sick no matter our mental state bro you know you, you, you know Good. It all goes back into, bro, are we honoring and praising you? How about Sham Yahweh Shai, man? And having faith. And like the brother yeah. said, these things are written for our learning, bro. This yeah. the, it, it is booking just, it, hey, what do Yahweh Shai say, man? John 6 and 63. Man. The words that he's speaking to us, they are spirit yeah. and they are yeah. life, man. This book is alive. Yeah. 
This book is alive, and I'm pretty yeah. sure every brother here can give testimony to that, man. This alive. book is alive. The words we speak, man, they alive, man. It happens yeah. in everyday life, man. Yeah. You know, we read about certain characters of wicked niggas. We see it manifested in our lives, man, yeah. around these guys and these different cats, man. We read about the men of the Lord, and we see it manifesting, what, with the men around us, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, but, but go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Let me finish that. Uh... Back in 2 yeah, yeah, yeah. Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 11, For behold, this selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal. Oh, vehement desire to be right, man. Because that's the, look, man, and that's, that's, that's the spirit you got to come in, man. You gotta be a you gotta be an aggressive servant of Yahweh by Shem We, man. we, we, no, Salakia, bro. We, we have to be aggressive servants to Yahweh by Shem Why? Because we want to be saved. Well, I, Go ahead, brother. Go oh. real quick. It says, um, Matthew the fifth chapter. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness. Mm -hmm. So, like you saying, man, it's really having that desire to of righteousness, them. man, yeah. to please the Lord, man. Even though it says. That shows you, going back to what y'all was mentioning about this being a fight, in the book of Sirach, the 17th chapter says, neither could they give themselves the fleshly hearts for stony. So we know we can't make ourselves perfect, but yet we're still fighting and striving <laughs> for perfection. Yeah. You know, and the things that we're going through is getting us closer to the image of Yahweh Shai, and he's going to finish the work that he started in us when he returns. But it's still that mentality of, I want to reason according to what's written. I want my thoughts to be according to what's written, mm -hmm. you know. And the things that we go through, the sorrow that we go through when we fuck up, all right, that allows us, man, you know what, it, it makes us better. But I'm going to finish out the verses. Hey, 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 it goes it goes into, do we believe that the Lord is perfecting us through what we're going through, man? Okay. You know, because like you said, we we, we can't give our, our, ourselves, you know, a fleshly heart, man. The Lord got to do that. He got to do that. But what do y'all shall tell us? Be perfect yeah. as our Father in heaven is perfect. Okay, so if we can't give ourselves fleshly hearts... Judges. How, Lord, how can I be perfect? You told me to be perfect. Fight. <laughs> Judges right? 5 and 11. It's the fight. It's the yeah, fight, right. but it also is the acknowledgement of what our trials and tribulations are what we're going through, man. We ain't just yeah. catching hell for nothing. Yeah, it's a glory and tribulation. You know, because yeah. tribulation worketh patience. Patience, patience, patience worketh experience. Experience, experience worketh hope. hope. You know, roughly paraphrasing Romans 5, hope man. Hope is not to be ashamed. Exactly. Uh, what? Hope is not to be ashamed. What is we going into? Uh, uh, shame. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Ooh. We got to grab that. Yeah. I think that's Romans 5. Because once again, because we speaking about two different types of shames here, two man. Of shame. And we ain't got to the other one yet. But we we read okay. about that. That's what we started with in Sirach 4. Okay. We're talking about two different types of shame. Yeah, man. See? The world speaks about the shame of the Lord. That's that Mark 8 that we read, man. Mm -hmm. See, the majority of our people, they're ashamed of the words of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. So guess what? That's going to lead to more sin. Kind. Because they following in their own ways. They're ashamed to follow the yep. Lord. They're ashamed of the discipline. They're ashamed of the, uh, of the standard that's set. Yeah. Right? But then it says what? There's a shame that leads to glory and grace. That grace kind. is mercy. Yeah. That's being what? Ashamed of the deeds that we doing, man. Yeah. You see? How we was in the world and how we were moving, man. You don't even want to be associated with that. That's with that, that godly sorrow. Yeah. And that godly sorrow is what's that that godly sorrow, that type of shame is what's gonna lead to glory and grace, yeah. man. But the shame that these people have, what it's gonna lead to? More sin. And ultimately it's gonna lead to what? The yeah. destruction, man. Yes, sir. And uh to, to make this point, the scripture speaks speaks about it says, He will keep thee as the apple of thine eye, right? So when you go into that, the apple of thine eye, that means the little man of the eye, which which it goes back to that quote. Uh, you quoted Job. He said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? So the fact that we are so insignificant to 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 the most high that he humbles himself to, to behold look at the us. things on earth, bro. <laughs> so if the Lord can humble himself just to acknowledge us. How much more should we here on this earth, man? And the fact that he do, how much more should we hope in that to 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 sustain us when we fall? Yeah. Because the scripture says a just man falls seven times, but get back up again. 
Uh, we we read the Sirach 14. Blessed is the man who has not uh, whose conscience has not condemned him, mm -hmm. and have not uh, failed from his hope in the Lord. All right. So when you do go off, which you will, that's not a license to oh well I'm gonna go off and blah blah blah. No, but the fact that you are imperfect, always remember that. Look, if you if you uh, you do what the Lord say, you do what He require. Look, He's He's paying attention to you. Uh, well, what is that? Isaiah 61 or uh, 62 or 60. The first couple of verses, it says a humble and a contrite spirit. No, it said to this man will I look. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66 and 1. 2 or whatever. 1 and 2. It says to this man will I look. Or in other words, to this man who will be the apple of my eye. I will regard, regard with care, man. Yeah. Yeah. Regard with care and favor. Yeah. Uh, just, oh, no, no, go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Well, I, it was going backtracking to a point that you had mentioned, man. Um, I was thinking about that wisdom of Solomon. I believe it's the uh, the first chapter. It says, "Seek not death in the air in of the, thy life. Pour not destruction upon thyself with yeah. the work of thine hands." Yeah. So you may fuck up, and then you got certain people with a certain mentality, man. Fuck it, and then they just bring more destruction upon themselves by doing more wickedness and sin, you know. And that yeah. happens, like in this society, somebody might have fucked up, you know got in trouble about something next thing you know now they doing drugs next thing you know it's just a downward spiral mm -hmm. but yeah. the just man he's gonna get back up gotcha. it's not gonna it shouldn't be a downward spiral we fuck up then it's like nah i'm adjust i'm gonna get up the lord's gonna get me up i'm i got a mentality to do do better i'm not quitting i'm not giving up and so on and so forth man yeah i'm glad you said that because a lot of brothers use that precept to go into suicide mm -hmm. and that's not what it's talking about per se Mm -hmm. You know, it can Saul apply, Saul but... fell on his own sword, bro. The yeah. Lord, the Lord, the Lord didn't say he was wicked for falling on his own sword, mm -hmm. and we know that because why? That man in Maccabees, yeah. he pulled his own. He, you know, he the guys came for him. He it out. said he pulled his own. He pulled his own insides out, man, and threw himself off the wall. Yeah. You know, so he would rather die. He killed himself than rather than than being in the hands of those heathen, man. Yeah. Being made sport Same thing of. what Saul did yeah. instead of be, uh, being made sport of, yeah. right? So it ain't talking about that per se, but it is because of the reason I'm gonna say it is because a guy that falls from his hope, he's committing suicide, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. see what I'm saying? That guy, he he knows he's walking into destruction. He yeah. knows that he let, you know? Yeah. He, he, he on death row and they about to give him the last meal. And he knows that, you see? Yeah. So th that's what that precept is actually talking about, man. Yeah. It's talking about when you fuck up. And you be like, well, fuck it. I fucked up. The Lord ain't for, ain't going to forgive me. So you give up. then you continue to, that's that Sirach 14, man. And that's literally what that wisdom of Solomon is talking about, man. Yeah, you, they go back to smoking cigarettes. They go back to eating pork. Exactly. They go back to all of exactly. that. Exactly. That's what that wisdom of Solomon is talking about. You know, there is cases where men of the Lord actually took their own lives because they wouldn't finna get into the hands of heathen, man. Yeah. You know, so how can we justify that precept with with with, with how suicide. those men reason? Yeah. You see, so that's literally what that wisdom of Solomon is talking about, and I'm glad that brother said that. But but, but 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 go ahead, brother. Real quick, Sirach seven, uh, Sirach two, seventeen and eighteen. They that fear Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in His sight, saying, "We will fall into the hands of the Lord, and not into the hands of men." But as his majesty is, which is incomprehensible, right? You can't even put it into words. So the same way the, the, the Lord's majesty is, his awesomeness, his might. He's called the almighty, right? It says, so is his mercy. So the mercy of the Lord is comparable to his majesty. And both are incomprehensible. So we trust in and having faith in that to, to better ourselves and not... To just fall into ruin. That, that woe is me spirit. That's one of the so-called seven deadly sins. How can we though, bro? Here it is. Paul persecuted the church. He said, he said, I led many brothers and sisters to their death. You see what I'm saying? Look, 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 look at the level of, of, a, of, of offense he brought. And yet the Lord saw fit to have mercy on him. Yeah. That's an example for us, man. You know? Yeah. 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 I, the reason why I say that, just real quick, no, I, I was just talking to a brother about that the other day. 
you know, he used, and he used him to go to the other Gentiles to be like, look, hey, if he can bring me out of some crazy, you know, situations, he can do it for you as well. Yep. Just trust him and believe him, do what he's supposed to do, man, that's kind, kind. Yeah. This one, quick one, straight go to the ahead, point, right. if I may. Uh, Psalms 147 and 11. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. Mm. So that's what it comes down to, man. The Lord is taking pleasure in those that hope in his mercy. But that's that godly sorrow, though. Yeah, yeah. It has to be in you. It, be. it can't be the sorrow of the world. The sorrow of the world, a nigga just sad because he got caught. Uh -huh. He ain't sad of the act. Ooh. That's the that's the sorrow of the world. Yeah. Uh -huh. A nigga get found out. Swalk you up. Kind. And I've been around guys like that, bro. He's just sad because he got caught. Yeah. He's not sad because of the act he's committed. He's not truly ashamed of what he did. Yeah. He's ashamed because, nigga, the light got exposed on him. Yep. And, that's and we can't be like that. No, yeah. no, it's no like go, you, ahead, go ahead. No, no, that's it. And that's what I was saying, man. That's why you get guys that don't want to be around brothers. Because Scripture speaks about that, man. Uh, 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 John 3. They don't come to the light lest their deeds be exposed. You only see a brother uh, when it's time to teach or when the, 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 the said prescribed moments or whatever that particular camp, right? That's the only time you see the brother. But as all brothers say, look, man, you know yourself and the most high know you. You That, re that intimate relationship that y'all got, all right? Because the scripture speaks about we are all naked before him. Yep. There's certain things brothers can't see, and there's certain things within your consciousness, within yourself, that brothers can't put a finger on. But you know, you know. The Lord see it. And the Lord know, and you know, and you know if it's iniquity or not. And that got to be what motivates you, man. That got to be what motivates you to be right, the, uh, that integrity of doing what's right when don't nobody see. Which the integrity don't per se mean that but that's what i call it you well, doing well, yeah well the integrity is the is pretty much you know when it, it speaks about the integrity of a building you know what i'm saying it's what it's what it's what upholds it's what strengthens and and, and keeps that building you know erect or oh, the things you can't see the beams the structure the foundation yeah, you know so yeah. it's the same thing with our integrity man yeah you know what i'm saying like like our integrity don't comes from you know the brothers from things that are seen yeah the integrity comes from the sincerity that's in each and every last one of us man and and ultimately we know if we sincere or not yeah yep you yep kind of, the you. lord knows all things the lord, yep you know so so you you might be able to fool a man for a little while for a season but you ain't never fooled the the holy spirit yeah it's almost like are you gonna be you know feel hey, that, like you've been mentioning you know that godly sorrow to the point where you already know he sees you so you know the you know, get your ass up and get to it. But that's true you know, faith, though. That's, yeah. yeah. And fear. Because it says that the, the, that the eyes of the Lord is 10,000 times brighter than the sun, but holding all the ways of man, even the secret parts, man. Yeah. The secret parts is talking about your thoughts. Yeah. So if you got a brother who's sitting there, he's battling thoughts. Here it is. He ain't even got to voice it. Man. <laughs> you know? You don't know what a brother is thinking, bro. You don't know. We don't know that. But here it is. That brother is battling thoughts in his mind like, nope, nope, rebuking that. Nope, I'm rebuking this. Nope, I'm rebuking that. The Lord sees all that. The yeah. next man don't see that. Yeah. The Lord sees that, though, and ultimately that goes back to, to the sincerity of each individual, man. And that's ultimately what, what we're talking about. Yeah. At the, at the end of the day, that's ultimately what we're talking about. Because we can talk about shame when it like, 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 here it is. You got motherfuckers in the world, bro. You know, a motherfucker, uh, like, here it is. You have a, a nigga, he's a mo, bro. And he knows he's a mo down. He's he's a mo up and down. Full front, he's a mo. But he keeps his secret. Mo sizzling. He keeps his secret, you know? And when it's exposed, oh, he, he act like he's ashamed. But really, nigga, you's a mo from the heart, you nigga. You a mo, nigga. That's who you are, bro. That's what you like. You love that shit. Show them who you are. So don't sit here and try to be like like you're ashamed of it because you in front of the guys now. Yeah. Not at the guys. Like, bro, yeah. what the fuck, bro? Now you trying to act like, oh, where well, I was drunk. Uh, nigga, no, use a mo, bro. You see, but that's an act. Oh, and, and we can't be. 
Go ahead, go ahead. No, go no, go I'm about to stop you, bro. Go. Go ahead, Doc. As it goes back to the Apostle Gabar, uh, he quote this often. In wine, there's truth. Yeah. So I want to hear that liquor shit. Damn, how you say it? Vino, vino Veritas. Vi and vino Veritas. And there wine it is. true. Yeah. The Romans, they used to get people faded and, and put them pretty much on trial. We don't talk. Oh, kind. Yes, yeah, sir. You know? Hey, I got a scripture real quick. Huh. Jeremiah 17 and 10. I, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh mm. Shai. You saw that? No, no. It, it's that's, that, that's it, it's a bad ringing chat. bells. It says, I, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. And I grabbed that because it says, Your reins, your reins is that inner you. Yeah, yeah it's who you are. That's it's who your you thoughts, are. it's your being. Your essence, like when you go into the Habakkuk 2 and uh, or 4, or is it 5? The soul that is in him is not upright. It's the second chapter. Yeah, the, the, the soul is napash, and it goes into your essence. That's you. That's that's all your inner mechanics that make you you. Mm. you see, that, that, that's not hidden to the, to Yahweh about Shem Yahweh Shai, first mm. and foremost, because he put it there. Yeah. But if you when you dealing with yourself, you you have to deal with yourself. The scripture says, uh, man, know thyself. You got to know what's good for you. You got to know what's bad for you. And the things that you battle and deal with, you got to you gotta uh, 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 confront it. Yep. Yep. Right? Because it brings shame. Like, it goes back to the Sirach 4. There's a shame that... Uh, that bringeth sin. That and a shame sin. that bringeth uh, glory and grace. And you want it to bring glory and, glory and grace. Yep. You, you got to confront that because that's, that's the fight. We all got our own particular fight, man. We're all sinners, and the Lord got us a, a, a particular fight for all of us. Uh, one brother's uh, fight might not be another brother's fight. One thing that this brother mastered might not be the thing that you mastered. But we all come together in, in, the, in the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai to, to want and be better. You got to want to be better. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that I believe the brother quoted earlier, that's Matthew 5. Blessed is he that hunger and thirst after righteousness. You got to want it, bro. The, want, the word want means you lacking. I'm lacking that, Lord. Mm -hmm. I needs that. Mm -hmm. When you hungry, nigga, you go find a... You Open definitely that. go find something to put in your fucking belly. Yep. Yeah. Open that fridge. You staring, looking. You got to find something. You okay. thirsty. I'm a little pot. You know, yeah, yeah, it, nigga, you, you, about to, you about to go find something to quench your thirst. And, yeah. and, and, and when you really on it, when you thirsty, you not going to drink no pop. Nah, you, you ain't going to drink some ain't water. You soda, mm -hmm. nigga. You no. Gonna, yeah. Mm -hmm. You going to drink water because <laughs> that's what you need. And that's what, it's the same way, man. The, uh, the, the, that's the Psalms. Uh, it says, uh. Open thy mouth and I will fill it. Mm, like yeah, if you yeah. feel like, look, man, look. Whatever you lacking, man, it goes back into James, man. It says, ask the Lord who uh, who give it liberally, liberally yeah. and upbraid it not. So I it ain't. So like it. it. ain't no reason, no excuse to 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 be in the, the the sad state of shame that Jake in, man. I believe it's Psalms 42, if I'm not mistaken, but it says, uh, uh, I panic after you. As a hawk panteth after the water brooks, man. Mm. <laughs> you know, and this is this is this is literally how we how we how we thirst after you. How about Shami Yahweh was shy, man? Psalm you know, yeah. it ain't it ain't it ain't to you know it ain't no outward show. No, make sure I'm at camp. Make sure I do my lessons. I do three uh, three a week every time. And the nigga goes deeper than that, bro. You know. Jake doing exactly three lessons yeah. a week. Yeah. Which, like, like, I'm not... Like, how am I moving in my everyday yeah. life, bro? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm panting after the Lord to the point where, nah, I need correction in my everyday life. How am I reasoning with my rib? Yeah. No, nah, maybe I'm off with that. Yeah. How am I reasoning with the brothers and how I deal with the brothers off camera? Yeah. How I'm functioning within the camp. You know what I'm saying? It ain't it ain't always, you know, what somebody sees, man. Yeah. It ain't always a video. It ain't always you on the line. Or you at camp. It ain't always that, man. That's Salakia. Oh, Salakia. Oh, yeah, yeah, Salakia, brother. Like, like Jake think a Salakia fix everything, bro. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, bro, a Salakia ain't fucking enough, man. Uh, often. Because, hey, the scripture says, if, uh, 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 if thou obey, thou don't need the sacrifice. 
So you need to be doing what's right. So you ain't gotta be apologetic. You, if you, if, uh, Paul said, if you judge thyself, then you don't need to be judged. So you gotta constantly be, uh, in contemplating in your own mind. Like, yeah. damn, did I? Who, who did I? Did, was exactly. this offensive? Yourself. Exactly. That's scrutinizing yourself, meaning you ain't just you really trying to get down to to you know what you need to work on, what you yeah. need to be better at, what you need to pray for. Do you need to fast? You know what I'm saying? Finding which area you lacking in and strengthen it. You, you truly knowing yourself, man. Yeah. You know? It's like brothers don't truly know they self, bro. Mm -hmm. How can the next man know you more than you? Mm -hmm. You know you know what I'm talking about? There's brothers where you got to tell a brother like, ah, no, bro. Yeah. And you got to look at that brother like, no, ah. And it's like, why? How am I telling you no when you don't? You you should be telling you no. Yeah, you you know, don't be scared to know yourself. Confront yourself. Which we need that. Don't get it. No, yeah. no, no, you, you know, I ain't, you know, we need that. You know, yeah. that's why the brotherhood is there. That's why we there for each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why we there for each other. You know. But I'm speaking on the aspect of, <laughs> you know, it's like, bro, come on, bro. Yo ass and put yourself in this predicament nine times and you you come on, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Like, you know, we gotta know we get come on man. Yeah, man. You keep you keep you keep you keep dealing with the nigga woman and going through hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep putting yourself in that come on man. How much advice can a brother give you yeah. at, at at a certain point, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's a good example. You know, I was you know, I was trying to think of an example in my mind, but whatever it may be. Whatever it may be, man, you might got a brother who, who, bro, you, bro, you not good with app-based jobs. Uh. You need to clock in, bro. Take your ass to a, to a eat a mic, bro. You know, you need something where you clocking in. Uh, yeah. Like you need that structured schedule. That's true, bro. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And then it's the brother like, uh, he keep fucking off the structural schedule. He keep, you know. No, I'm gonna just work for myself. I, it obviously ain't working, brother. You gotta get under the yoke. I, you gotta, <laughs> you got to. So, so you know. Now, once again, that's needed for a brother to tell you that. But it comes to a point where a brother telling you that so much, you gotta apply it. Yes, sir. You got to, bro. It can't come to the point where the brother keep telling you the same shit over and over again, bro. And you knowing it's detrimental to you, it's detrimental to the camp, and you putting everybody in a bad situation, bro. So. Now it comes to like, nah, you gotta know yourself, bro. And that's a part of that shame too. Yeah. I'm ashamed to the point where I keep putting myself in this position and now I gotta keep coming to these brothers for it. Like I'm ashamed to come yeah. to these brothers with the same shit. Yeah, you don't wanna keep doing that. Yeah, you don't wanna keep doing that. If you in the right spirit, you don't wanna keep doing that. You don't wanna be the the like uh, the saying in the world is you're only as strong as your weakest link. You don't want to be that Winkers League as a grown man. You don't want to be that Winkers League. You want to be, you want to be uh, helping. You want to help. Yeah, yeah, come on, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yep. You want me to finish this? Uh, yeah. All right, this is, uh, fin uh, I'm going to read it from the top. 2 Corinthians 7 and 11. For behold, this selfsame thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, Yea, what revenge in all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Mm. So, hey, that's, I mean, that's pretty pretty much it, man. The brothers explained it, you know, so it shows you the, the result of that godly sorrow, man, if you respond to it correctly, all right? If it truly is a godly sorrow, man, you know, that, that shame that we feel, man, it should make us really reflect and be like, all right, man, what do I need to change? I don't want to feel this anymore, man. I don't want to be an embarrassment. You know, like, yeah, I know as a child, you know, it's like you might do certain things, man, and you're just so embarrassed, embarrassed or ashamed of how it reflected on your parents and everything like that. It's like, man, I don't even, I don't even want to, you, you don't even want to look up at your parents, all right, because of what you did, you know? You can't look them in the face. You can't look them in the eye because you're so fucking ashamed. So it's like, man, I'll never do that again just because I don't want to have to not feel comfortable looking my, my my mother my father in the eye or to bring that make them feel that uh, uh ashamed of me you know but that was it yeah it's a scripture that speaks about uh and we could probably end it on this it speaks about they cannot they will not be able to stand in the evil day uh you guys know what i'm talking about it speaks uh i think it's revelations 
It's a scripture which speaks about uh, not being able to. Uh... I know it's. Ah, oh, man. I, I think I might be wording it wrong. There's one in Luke 21 that says, Watch and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to stand before the Son of Man and to escape these things. That ain't. That's a good one. If we, if I, if, if word, word, word it again. That you, that, that you may. Um, that's Ephesians. Not that one. That's Ephesians six. It says, uh, "Stand in the day of trial, or stand day of judgment." I know there's one in First John. Let me see, man. Because it basically is going into like. Uh, you're going to be acknowledged for righteousness. But, ah, man. No, yeah, yeah. I mean. I'm going to find it. I know I'm going to find it when the video over. <laughs> but anyway, man, brother, we can wrap up. Anybody had a closing scripture? No, nah, I mean, if we ain't got one, bro, that's it, man. You know, just, just. Hey, that's shame, man. Are we ashamed? I do, I got hey, you. hey, that's Sirach. We never grabbed those Sirach. The Sirach 40, and uh, I think it's chapter 40 and 41, or it might be chapter 41 and 42. Mm -hmm. It goes into things that we should be ashamed of, and then it goes oh, into yeah. things that we shouldn't be ashamed yeah, of. Yeah, kind. You know, I believe it's 42. 42. It goes into the things that we shouldn't, you know, be yeah. not ashamed of the Most High and His law, kind. be not ashamed of reckoning with friends. So going back at chapter 41 tells us the things that we should be ashamed of, man, you know. So the scriptures lay it out for us, man. You know, we truly have a guideline, you know. We have a standard that's been lifted, that's been given us, man. And as long as we sincerely go, 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 go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Because uh, the brother had a good point when he was speaking about, you know, when, when children is ashamed to look their parents in the eye because they know that they did wrong. This is Hebrews 12 and 9. It says, Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? So it's in that same ballpark of, you know, knowing that the Lord is looking at us to and feeling that shame. You don't want to have that feeling of being afraid to look him in his eye. Yeah. You know? Oh, hey, well, look at LeBron and his sons. You know, his older son, just, the nigga just had a heart attack. But look at this, you know, he, he got two sons, his youngest son and his oldest son, they on the court. Mm -hmm. Just imagine, bro, if they, no, I don't want to play basketball, dad. <laughs> no, you know they entered into basketball because they didn't want to let this nigga down, man. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So they wanted to follow in his steps. Yep. But that's carnally wise. So how much, how much more us in the eyes of your how about Shami was shy, man? Kind. Hoping that we following, you know, the example of Abraham, the example mm. of, you know, Isaac and Jacob and King David and, you know, our righteous forefathers, man, that we read about, man. You know, you say you got it. Out. I got it. This is Psalm 1 and 5. It says, therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh Hashem Yahweh know if the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You know what I'm saying? So when you when you get called to be a. Uh, to give witness to testimony to yourself and to your actions and to your doings, you can stand up proudly and say, well, look, I did what I could to serve you. And, you know, and I, you know, I gave all that I had. Well, you know it says, it, it, it says, uh, in, I think it's Hebrews, but it says, uh, let us come boldly For to the, the throne, throne of, of grace. grace that we may receive mercy, man. You know, that's why it says in Corinthians, second Corinthians, we all shall stand before the judgment seat of, the, uh, of Yahweh Shah so that we should give account for what we have done in this flesh, whether it be good or whether it be evil, man. Yes, sir. You know, so you close up, brother. Hey, so with that, Lord willing, we hope this was an edifying lesson to the hopeful elect. Once again, we want to give all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh. Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Akakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Through the scriptures, peace, peace it over for you, like Shalom. Shalom.